I have individuals that I trust and trust me. We're on the same page as far as trying to get better. We're on the same page as just kind of picking things apart, whether it's good or bad. Why is it good? Why is it bad? The communication that I have with my team of individuals is really key and paramount in those, in those situations. It just gives you the ability to just go out there and play free golf. I can just go play. That's freedom. For Zach Johnson, freedom on the course is found in his preparation. It has nothing to do with shots hit in the clutch or tense moments coming down the stretch. It has everything to do with the process that leads up to those moments. Every day, every round, every hole and every, every shot is a process. There's the gathering of information, then there's the commitment, then there's the execution. You really can't control much more after that. You have to embrace those peripherals, but then you gotta throw them aside and get back to the opportunity that's in front of you, and that's all it is. It's just another opportunity. What Zach does so well is that he'll go out there and, and he knows his plan, he knows what he needs to do, he'll get to a point where he feels like he's accomplished that feat and then move on to the next thing. Being a competitor, you always want to get better, and you're always looking for ways to do what you do better. Out on the PGA Tour, any little thing that you can do better is going to give you an edge. My fuel is being in situations where you have to get up there and execute. That's why I work, and that's why I practice. There's so many things I can do just in a two-hour period on the golf course by myself that it's going to help me get ready for the next week. Practice has never been an issue for me. I don't mind getting on that range. I don't mind getting on the practice putting green and trying to get better, trying to hone, trying to polish. This is the kind of stuff that I know when I'm out in the heat of competition, I can rely on down the stretch. As you can see, it's not as easy as it looks. He's excellent at sticking to the game plan. Every year when we have the meeting, we go back and look at what we were tried to accomplish the year before. And there's usually three or four goals, and typically he hits two or three of the goals. So it's really paid off for us every year. The meeting, or the summit, as Zach and his team refer to it, is an off-season chance for everyone associated with him to break down his game. Some of the best golf minds in the world focused on one topic, Zach Johnson. I'm there. My caddy, Damon Green's there. My coach, Mike Bender's there. Dr. Morris Pickens, my sports psychologist, is there. My trainer, Chris Noss. My physio guru, Troy Van Beeson's there. My statistician, Peter Sanders, is there. The nice thing is we've pinpointed and really kind of filtered it down to just three or four things that are my focus. And if I hammer out, it could potentially, we feel, take me to the next level. Everybody checks their egos at the door, and everybody knows that their role is to help Zach play the best he can. It's long hours. We do a lot of talking, but it's almost like a brotherhood. Anything else? Good. I always use that analogy like a NASCAR team. You know, everybody's got their individual thing that they're responsible for, but in the end, they all have to team together. The better they team, the better the output of the driver is, in this case, Zach. And his career resume may just surprise you. In his 11 seasons on tour, he has won 11 times, including the 2014 Hyundai Tournament of Champions and, of course, the 2007 Masters. He is 10th among active players in career victories, and since 2007, he is third in total wins behind only Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson. I think pound for pound, he's the best player in the world. What he's been able to accomplish with his body and his skill set has been just amazing. You heard the term bulldog. He knows he doesn't have the physical attributes like his colleagues do, and so he knows he has to work a lot harder. He has to use everything he's got to be able to compete against these guys. He's a great wedge player. He's a phenomenal driver of the ball, always in the top 10, and he's an excellent putter. So he does the things that you need to do in the game of golf to succeed. And that's the beauty about golf, is that you can be a lot of different sizes, a lot of different shapes, and have success. This game breaks your body down a little bit. And then two, I don't feel like I perform nearly as well as if I don't get in here and do something. This is just as instrumental in what I'm doing as putting. 
Beyond the winning putts, the large trophies, and big checks lies a gray area, a space that somehow separates even the rarest of talents. In Zach Johnson's case, he lives in that gray area and knows its secrets. For right next to him, hiding in its shadows, is Team Zach. Everybody's got an important cog in the wheel. We all have a role that we have to do to work with a high-level golfer, and even off the golf course, a phenomenal human being. So I really enjoy working with Zach. I've been blessed to be able to see his rise and see these accolades start to be laid upon him, but he's the one that I feel has gotten so much out of his game, and, and that's due to his perseverance and his determination and his team. Yeah, we've, we've, we've uh, helped him uh, along the way. To see how he's dealt with success and the various aspects, it's just been really fun to be a part of that. I'm a product of great people around me, great individuals that push and drive me, guys that just want the best for me, and individuals that certainly put egos and agendas aside for one common goal, and that's to play good golf.